Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for my Quick Tip Thursday. This is episode number 13. Before we get started, here are some people that commented on my last video. I had asked about suggestions for a new journal. Cindy suggested Tea Time Journal. Carol suggested a spring floral one. Annette said a boho journal. Teresa suggested a tall travel journal. Amy, a vintage farm journal. And Lucy suggested a tall document journal, which is the one I'm going to be doing next. Mitzi said a flip-flop journal using envelopes. Uh, this person is from Spain. I found that interesting. They were telling me about uh, different glues. And then Red Arrow Tink Tinker is a new subby. So bear with me in this video. This video is for people who maybe don't have a lot of knowledge on computers and files and printing but I do have some good suggestions especially toward the end of the video for printing mirror images of envelopes so stay tuned for that the other thing is if you would like to see a picture of Miss Fiona, my puppy who is now almost nine months old, she was helping me um, with uh, Etsy orders. So there's a cute picture of her at the end of the video. And uh, let's get started on this Quick Tip Thursday. Now, as I'm starting to think about what kits to use, yesterday I downloaded four of Medieval Mirage's new kits, and I will link them in the description box. She has a tall kit for journals with an add-on, and then a regular size kit with an add-on. And you can see there are 21 different files. So what I will do is I will organize these on my computer a little bit better so that all of everything that will be in the tall kit will be in one file and the things that are in for a regular journal will be in another file. So you can see I have two windows open. This first one is my downloads and that has all of the kits that I downloaded yesterday. But then I want to put these kits and all my kits are in a file called templates and a journal. And I have created two different files. One is for the regular size kit of Medieval Mirage and the other one is for the tall one. So what I will do is I will drop these files into each of those two different ones. And I'm going to try to do this so that you guys don't get sick and you can see it. So here is the add-on for the tall. You see that word tall? I just click it and bring it over to the tall file and drop it in. This one says regular size. Let me get up closer. That's the regular size one. Click on it, right click, and then download that in there. So now both the regular size and the tall size are in my template area 
if I click on the regular size, double click it, there's all the regular pages and I move them. If you put your arrow onto um, the file and then press your finger down on your keyboard, you can move it around. Okay, so I put them all in numerical order, 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, 31 through 41, and then 42 through 51. Those are the journal pages, and then down below is the add-on for each one. So that's the regular size. Then if I go back over and then I go to the tall, double click on it, there's all the files on the tall, and if I click on it, there's all my pages. Now, if you notice, there's this page where it's the terms of use. I delete that after I print up the pages because sometimes it's hard for me to remember, did I print those pages up or not? And if that page is gone, then I know I have printed those pages up. So now I'm gonna start printing my kits. Now, I think I have showed this to you guys before, but I keep my kits individually per kit in one of these little zipper bags. You can get them from Timu, you can get them from AliExpress, you can get them from Amazon, lots of different places. And then I take my label maker and I label each one. This is for the tall kit. These are, these are the journal pages. The add-on kit is usually tags, envelopes, tuck spots, things like that. So that's for the tall journal and I've highlighted it with a little bit of yellow. And then I've done the same thing for the regular size kit. Again, the regular size journal pages will go here and then the ones with the add-on, the envelopes, tags, things like that will go in here. So then in my craft room, this is the shelf where all my digitals go. And I don't have a lot of different designers. I have a couple of shabby dabby doodah there. And then this is all medieval mirage. I think it's because the style from medieval mirage and Roxy Creations are the, the digital kits that I prefer. So these are all my Medieval Mirage ones. They're all in a row. And then next are my Roxy Creations, my Rachel kits. And again, they're all in bags so that, and so I can grab and reach what kit I want. Now this is her French Chateau. Rachel's French Chateau kit. I will pull that out and I will use some elements from that. And then I remember, because I've written it here, French Chateau, I will go to my computer and I can type in that. And what will pop up is that file with those in it, because I've already made one journal using this kit. So I will have to more than likely print some more things out. So there on my computer is page number 11 through 20. I have printed it. So then now I will move the terms, delete that. And now that signals to me that that file has been printed. Now you guys may think I have totally lost my mind, 
but I'm so tired of printing papers and having them be on the wrong side. So I made myself a little label, lay the paper with the top in first so it goes through first. That's a picture of the tray. And I've even wrote top of page, bottom of page. So the top of the page goes in first. At least that's with my printer. And I am referring to when I am printing on both sides of my page where I've printed the image, I wanna flip it over and have an image on the other side. That's what I have to do for that second print. Now, as I was printing off the add-on kit, here's some things that might be some tips for you. Okay, so these are tuck spots. And so I print those on my Epson 32 pound paper. You see, it's pretty thick. This one, same thing, the Epson paper, you can kind of tell they're a little bit thicker. I did that with the postcards, uh, with the tags. Now, one thing I didn't do it is on this one, this letter, because this is thinner. It will be a letter. It will be cut down. I did go ahead and back it so that when I fold it up and put it in the journal, someone will be able to turn it over and write on that. So that's on regular hammer mill paper. It didn't need to be strong like these tuck spots here. Let's see what else I did. That's strong. This again is a letter and I just printed it on my hammer mill paper and then backed it. The one thing I did notice with Jaff's kit is she had the front of one letter and then she had the back of the letter. So that was fun. Now on these printouts, I used newspaper and it's finicky to print on. I'm gonna show you the newspaper. It's from Amazon. I will link it in the description box. But it's, it's th thin, thin paper and it can be a real booger to print on. But what I do is I take some of this removable removable adhesive and I put some on the corners of, of my regular Walmart paper and then I lay the newspaper print on top of it and it holds it in place as it goes through the printer because otherwise this paper it is so fragile and thin it will jam your printer. So that's a little tip. I did several of those. Again, a letter. And that's going to look very authentic when I crinkle it up and tear it. Now, when I did it on this paper between the two, okay, this is the newsprint paper, nice and thin. And this is the regular hammer mill paper. And it's still gonna look okay, but I think this will look more authentic. Uh, let's see, some of these, because I knew this was gonna be a pretty good size uh, journal card. I went ahead and backed it. Now you're going to be able to journal on that. That way it will be thinner in 
the journal, then adding another piece of paper on the back of this to cover up that white. This again, the same. When you fold this envelope up and you turn it to where you're going to open up the envelope, you want something on the back. I think I did that on that. I did that on that. On this one, I printed it on um, just uh, very vanilla cardstock. This is stamping up. And because I will cut this out, it looks like it goes together and folds. And this will be on the back. And that way I will just be able to do a little bit of edging on it. On this envelope, because it has this design, I printed this on the other side so that when I cut this out and you look inside the envelope, you're going to see a similar image. Same thing with this. This is an envelope and I backed it with another paper. Now there was something that I did learn. Let me put this away so I don't get confused on which kit goes with which kit. Now the add-on, that was the tall one. That was the tall kit. This is the add-on for the regular size one. And once again, this is going to be a nice, tall letter to have in the journal, and I backed it. This is an envelope, and what I did is I figured out if you print the exact same image on the other side, as you cut it out and fold it, it's going to look the same on both sides. So. That was a new, something new for me. I tried it on this one, but it didn't work because you can see the orientation of the front of the envelope is there. The back side, it, it's on the opposite side, so that's not going to work. But I'm still going to cut it out, and I will put something on the other side of this flap down in there so that you don't see it. So that's one thing I, I figured out. It only works doing the double if you have the envelope, like a big one that is centered in the page. Then you can print both sides. This one, I realized it was gonna be a nice size journaling page and I backed it. This was some nice journaling cards, pretty good um, size. So I used the Epson heavyweight paper, the 32 pound, and I will back those with some backing paper. This one again. I I'm not sure if I like this color. I just ran it through my copy machine. It's a little bit dark. I may throw some water sprinkles on it or something like that, but it does it is the dark edge there. But anyway, uh, let's see again. That was oh, because I knew this was going to be a nice size journaling card, I went ahead and backed it. Uh, I did the same with the envelope on this side, both double. So th I think that's a pretty good little tip. This one, because I knew this was going to be a good size journaling card to fold up and put in a journal, I backed it with line paper. And then this one, I just did the envelope and then the similar um, backing paper. So I'm going to show you on my computer 
another thing that will be helpful for you guys. Now, as you are printing, you're going to pull up a page. Let me get my little icon here, my little arrow. Okay, I'm gonna double click on it. That's my page. Now up here, if you want it to go away, you would click the red one, but if you want it just to drop down below, down here, you click on that little yellow one. And when I'm going through and printing, a kit, I save background pages when I run across a kit. And if you have a really good digital design designer like uh, Medieval Mirage, she will give you several background pages so that you can print them up on the other side of the digital kit that has um, Images. Now, what I've done here is then I kind of renamed them greenish background, neutral background, and then bluish background. And then that way, when I am bringing up a page, for instance, like this, and I want like the neutral background on the opposite side, I know to go down here and it will be there. And I, like I said, I leave them down in that little right hand bottom corner so that I don't have to go searching for them in all of the kits. So that's another little tip. As you're printing off digitals, if there's background pages that you would want to use on multiple different images, to help your journal flow, then save them down at the bottom. So I thought I would go ahead and show you what I meant by printing on both sides. So this is one of the envelopes. That was the front of it. And then I also printed on the other side. So you don't have this white part there. This one was the one where I said you're able to print the mirror image on the other side of the page, especially if it is centered. So that's that, and that's going to be really pretty in the journal. Here's one that I went ahead and folded up, and so I'll be able to decorate those. So it's just exactly the mirror image. Uh, here's one here where I did the blue. Uh, here's a pocket. Another like little coin envelopes. And this one, remember this image? It was one where there was several pieces on the uh, page. It was not just one envelope. So when I tried to print it double, it, it, it showed a lot of the white around it. So what I did is I just took another piece of the printable, glued it onto this flap here, and again, that's what you would normally have to do if you hadn't printed on both sides. So this saves bulk in your journals. Let's see if I can get that off. There you go. Okay, so then now when I fold it up, then this flap, is looks better um here's some of the journal pages this is the one remember i did where i did it on the very vanilla and it was just the 
plain color on the inside and I just put a little tab there. This one, remember I said I wasn't real happy with this color of paper. What I did is I put a little label down there, a little strip of the kit there, and then an image there. This is going to make for a really nice journaling card. And I just put that lady down there. This one, it'll just be able to slip into a pocket. And the same thing with this one. This was on that lined paper and I just put some French book page there and the image. And then here are the envelopes I was telling you about. So I have a video on how to have envelopes look aged if you don't aren't able to buy the real thing. So by kind of crinkling it up and tearing it, and then this one is folded very similar to the way they used to fold them back in the 1800s and it just slips into those little flaps there. I can get it in. And then here was the one on the newspaper print. And then I just added a piece of plain newspaper print to journal on there. This is also the newspaper print, nice and thin to be able to journal there. And then this one was on the regular uh, hammer mill paper. And what I did is I just folded it up. I added a wax seal there and some twine. And so I will be able to put some kind of a paper in there. So anyway, I hope these tips helped you out. I know it was a little bit longer video than my normal Quick Tip Thursday, but I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me, and I will see you guys next Thursday. Thanks, and bye-bye.